I have some at-home medical products, an EKG device, a blood pressure cuff, and of course now the well-known pulse oximeter. We're going to test them out, see how well they work, how easy they are to use, and what information you actually get. Let's get into it. So this is the ArmFit blood pressure monitor. We're going to take it out of our case now. Looks like we have a blood pressure cuff and a charging cord. So it powers on, it actually has the correct date and time showing here. It does of course have Bluetooth connection which will allow us to hook it up to our phone and receive our measurements. But let's go ahead and test it out now. Let's try a blood pressure. So we'll just put it on here. And I always thought this was kind of tough, getting them to cinch down yourself. But that worked pretty well, it's pretty easy. Okay, we hit start. So it's puffing up and it actually tells you the pressure on the way. So we're at about 100 millimeters of mercury right now. 150, it's getting quite tight. This says my pressure was 132 on 84 with a pulse of 58. So you just hold the power button down here to turn it off. Pretty easy, uh, I didn't read any of the instructions, but that was not hard to use, not hard to figure out, and gave me a blood pressure reading quite quickly. Now there's only one way to check how accurate that was, and that's to do it manually. So let me grab one, and we can find out. Now for this method, we will use a classic blood pressure cuff or a sphygmomanometer. Since I'm doing this myself, it's a little tricky, so what I'm gonna do is get my stethoscope in my ears, get the bell or diaphragm, sorry, of my stethoscope underneath over the artery, just like that. <laughs> 132 on 82. So I would say the accuracy is actually really impressively good from that monitor. So the WellU ArmFit monitor, uh, overall, pretty good. This is the EKG tracker. It says we need to download the app, VI Health, to be able to do this. So let's download the app and see what happens. So I've got the device paired up here and what we're gonna do is go ahead and place my fingers on. I've read the instructions and it says I need to leave my fingers on for 30 seconds. Here we go, fingers are on. And just like that, 30 seconds are complete and we'll now let this save here. You can see here that this actually did a pretty good job and it's a pretty clean strip. Overall though, I think we should compare that to the Apple Watch. What better way to do that than to just pull out my watch and start an EKG? Oh, this new crazy mother... Just like that, Apple is going to say sinus rhythm. Last but not least is the mighty pulse oximeter. Now, everybody knows about pulse ox in this last year because they know about their oxygen saturation. So this little device is really cool. It's actually easy on, easy off. Just like the ones in the hospital, it kind of clamps down on your finger. As soon as it clamps down and notices your finger's in there, it will turn on and then start to obtain a pulse ox reading. And you can actually look at the waveform, which I think is really, really good. Down here, there's a waveform indicator. Now, one fun fact about this that you may not know is that these can be tricked. This is gonna have trouble through nail polish and that's gonna be the same across the board. This works by passing light through your finger. And if it cannot pass light through your finger and determine how much oxygen is on those hemoglobin molecules, it's not going to give you an accurate reading. You see, as we mentioned, hemoglobin binds oxygen. But you can imagine if there was another substance that bound oxygen, this would still read as though all of those hemoglobin sites are bound. That doesn't mean that you're saturated with oxygen. In fact, in carbon monoxide poisoning, which can come from cars or certain gas ovens, you will have your hemoglobin completely bound. And this will actually read 100, even though there's no oxygen there. My reading for this device, admit, observe, or discharge. This is actually an admit. I think this is really cool. I like having this. I've never had a pulse ox. This could be really easy if you would just want to do a pulse check at the gym or see if you get hypoxic when you run or something crazy like that. You could bring this along, pop your finger in here and get a very quick reading and it really saves the battery. It turns right off. As for the Wellu blood pressure cuff, 
This one I'll go ahead and give and admit as well. I think this is a totally reasonable option for a blood pressure cuff. There are a lot of brands out there, and if this fits your price point, you like the way it looks, it folds up nice and small, this could be a great option for you. Of course, it does have Bluetooth connectability. You can save your results and link it together with all the other devices that you've seen here. Last, the EKG Rhythm Strip Monitor. I'm gonna give this an OBS. I think the concept is cool. I get the idea. I just don't personally see the utility of having a limited accuracy EKG at home yet. If you're very worried that you have an irregular heart rate, you should be seeing your doctor anyway. And these are not 12 leads. These do not evaluate for ischemia or a heart attack or anything really that's concerning except for atrial fibrillation or a regular heart rate. So is it worth getting one of these? Probably not, but if you're into it, I think this one works fine, just like I think the Apple Watch works fine, and they link up to your phone easily, so that's an option. If you enjoyed watching today's video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We would love to see you in the next video. Let me know in the comments what products you want me to test next, and of course, there are links down below if you decide you wanna check out any of these products. Thanks again, we'll see you in the next video.